Good evening, welcome to another preview, if you like, this time not of a season, not of a particular game, but of a very special occasion. Some very esteemed guests here, the, at the far side, Jaron Marsden from St Michael's Marl Inn. We have um, Lynn, yeah, Lynn Catney, Lynn, I, I know you well, Lynn, <laughs> Lynn Catney, Pat McDade, a former chairman, Pat, you were there quite a number of years, and, uh, and Connor Hamill. I know your dad pretty well, John Hamill. Connor, you've been around the club for a long time as well. I have, yeah. Pat, you and I go back quite a, quite a few years from the old Port Vale days. And you, you talked me out of retirement at 22, by the way. You remember that? <laughs> I that, do indeed, one yes. One time when we played the games in Paul's school, yeah. and you're over the water, got a few trial soccer, but your, your main forte over the years was being chairman and looking at others from Megas Morning. And you have a fantastic um, event coming up here in two weeks' time in the Seagull. Over 350 tickets sold. What's the proper reasons been like, Pat, and what, how busy have yourself, committee, and Eddie Mulgrew been during that time? Well, I haven't really been that busy. Um, I've took a back seat this past few years, and um, Eddie Mulgrew, and there's a, a new committee there, and uh, they're all working wonders, and they've pushed, they took the club forward in leaps and bounds this past few years. So, um, Thomas Hummel was in um, for a term, five-year term, before Eddie, and he started the ball rolling there too. So we've just moved on. Every year, we seem to take another step on things. More things are getting done every year. Brilliant. Pat, one of, one of, the, one of the driving forces behind all of this and behind all the clubs looking forward is with the ladies. We're going to ask Lyndon about that in a wee second, but the ladies are driving all the clubs forward as far as PR is concerned, as far as marketing is concerned. How many of the girls are going to the event and how far are they pushing off you as well? Well, I, I think you know, Lynn can answer how many, um, many of the girls are going to the event. I don't really know. I know there's well over 300 going and they're setting the tables out as each table is going to be a county in Ireland. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have 32 tables as far as I know. Excellent. Um, as I say, I haven't had really any input into that at all. I'm sitting back and just going to go on and enjoy myself yeah. and no pressure. Um, so there's a lot of other people there who's yeah. put weeks and months into this year. Yeah. And uh, it, it should be a fantastic night. Yeah. But what, what, what has the highlights been for you this last, say, 20, 30 years as far as the team's concerned? I know you've won championships and down the Garrett had a good year this year as well. So what, what were the highlights from your playing career moving forward? Well, I had, I had a, a few, uh, a right few highlights from from a start to play. I never played Gaelic football till I came up to Marlin. I'm originally from Belfast, and um, with the troubles and all, then uh, my family moved up up to Marlin. Uh, I had a brother married already living there, so we moved up in there, and made some good friends over the years. Absolutely fantastic. Met some lovely people, and. Uh, Friendships going back a long, long time. In fact, um, uh, one of the guys here now, Jared Mars, I know him all my life. And I it, say he's one of the best, reliable men that I've ever known in my life. Um, I know Connor from from he started to play football from New Age. Oh, same with his brothers. Uh, and our good fella, dedicated to the club 100%. Uh, and then Lynn here. Lynn helped me in 2000 start a ladies team along with another lady who's in, in uh, Canada. As far as I know, Mary McWilliams and between the three of us, we started the ladies team and they've come on leaps and bounds. Uh, we, we'd lost three championship finals, and uh, but this year they won the championship and the league. So they've come on absolutely fantastic. Uh, the club on, on the on the senior end went from Division 1 to Division 4, but held their own for a brave lot of years and had a rebuild because the numbers weren't there at underage level. Mm -hmm. But this past um, five, six, seven, eight years, they're starting to filter three and the team's starting to get built up. Good. And hopefully we'll get back till till where we were. In, yeah. in the 70s and 80s we were a fair a fair good good team in down. Yeah. So we're hoping to move uh, forward. Yes, move yeah. forward there and get there well as soon as possible. But we we know it's gonna take time. Yeah. Connor, you have a you have a few esteemed guests coming to the, to the event that know you didn't know who's going to be going to be doing MC for you. With Connor Laverty coming to it, the current Kilcoo manager, and uh, Laurie McCarthy, the GA president of Luxor on as well. So it's going to be a big night of respect, you know, for everybody. But maybe you get a few Kilcoo boys back in the down pond, any chance? Well, it'll be it'll be good to see uh, the county. It's one of the proof for the thing. Uh, as I kind of was. Uh, 
the 84, was up in 84 final, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. big generation jump to the 2010 final when yeah. we lost to, to Cork. Yeah. So it's important for them, the people coming in there senior team now see the county doing well as well mm -hmm. because you know it kicks on and improves you know popularity of the sport. Hopefully, they can unite the yeah the county and get players back and interest in playing for the for the uh, county. Particularly the two boys because yeah. they have a strong team there that done great things for the last ten years as a club. Yeah. But the representation for the county has been low. So yeah. you would hope you can get them interested. Yeah. They hope and kick it on and I suppose we'll have a room next week when yeah. he's there to make sure he's he's getting the boys interested. What, what, what's it like? I mean, just taking these sideline view of things for them it's moving off the track just for one second, it's very interesting. We found that when Cross and Glen were dominating in Armagh, it sort of became them and us situation. Mm -hmm. Everybody hated what they didn't care, and they kept on winning. It, is there a situation in Down where Kilcoo are winning everything? And uh, is there a wee bit of jealousy or a wee bit of rivalry there? I mean, you know, is it a situation where they're dominating so much, they're so good, and people are saying, look, maybe I hope they're beat sometime, they're a fantastic club, but yeah, well, it means that them against us in the situation. There'll always be fans of the underdog. Yeah, um, yeah. But if you're, if you're looking at it from a bigger scheme going into the All-Ireland series, you're, you want your strongest teams going through and representing your county, yeah. and then obviously representing Ulster. Um, so there's no doubt when you're, when you're watching uh, the championship and down, most teams will be cheering on the underdog and hoping to see a few upsets, yeah. but certainly when it gets to the, the business end, you want your strongest team yeah. always going forward. And when the county teams are doing well in, in the, the championships, you want to see that kick into the, the down team eventually yeah. as well. So I can once leave, say, once leave the county and you want to support with Ulster and the All Ireland. You always want them to do well, but you know, I would always say there's. You want a good match and you want the underdog to, to win, but I know what you mean. hopefully, I mean. Uh, if the Kilku boys, they'll have a tough game against Bally Bay. They certainly will. So, I've uh, seen that last weekend. Yeah, it was a great game to watch, but the second half, Bally Bay just took off. So it's certainly definitely. Yeah, hope Kilku can push on. Can push on. Lynn, can I just, just ask about, about about your situation with, with um, the ladies? I know you have daughters playing, you're still playing. Yeah. And you're fit as you've been a little bit for a long time, you're telling us, but um, <laughs> the ladies had a good year this year, so it's, it's an ideal opportunity and an ideal time to move things forward with the celebration of the 60 years. So the ladies are sitting up, sitting up there with the men's team, as it were. Well, I'd say the ladies are above the men's team now. <laughs> Gotta get that one in. <laughs> <laughs> the women, they have did well. Like, they have to think when, when me and Pat, when Pat first rocked at my door in 1999, asking about starting the team up with Mary. Um, we actually just laughed at it at the start, like. But then, the year two thousand was when we joined the league. For for years, we didn't do much, did we? Like, we we hardly got a team even to train. We were running around looking players to to field matches. But all over the years, no matter how bad or we play it, or most of the times we play it thirteen aside, we struggled to get fifteen. Yeah. But never ever folded in all those years. In the twenty two years that we've been playing. It's a good state to our club, as in the girls themselves, because they all get on well. They, if you go as far as saying they like each other. So nobody has ever left our ladies team and went to another team. Mm -hmm. If they've left our team, they have retired. And that's, that's down to the groundwork even Pat himself done at the start, because if he hadn't stayed at the start, we wouldn't have a team now. Because yeah. nobody else wanted us back then. Yeah. It was all about the senior men. Nobody wanted the ladies team back then. So if it wasn't for Pat, Practically, even though I was there with him, but Pat done most of the rounding up of the girls to play. Oh, he did. So even even to look at the success we've had this year with the championship and the the league, it it has taken all them girls right back from 1999 to get where we are, including Pat's own daughters, then Kira, Claire, and Orla. They all play as well. So it, it's taken right back from day one. If everybody's congratulating us now, but if everybody hadn't stayed way back in then yeah. we wouldn't have the team we have now because we'd have folded and maybe never ever got yeah. them back together again then you, you were always more then what was your background playing ways did you play with anybody else in your younger years well we start i started off with st paul's in lurgan but as i say it wasn't called st paul's back then but i can't remember yeah and um, it was only one year with them and we won the junior championship uh, with jimmy burns and jimmy boyle then after that when they folded then we all went to we went to clan Iron and played for a few years in clan Iron. Mm -hmm. then i threw the head up and said I wasn't playing again until Pat knocked on the door. Do you only stick to the daughters, tell you to retire or anything? Or the oh, I get that all the time. <laughs> that, that comes all the time. But then you hear people of, there's a woman in Monaghan playing 
camogie and she's 65. Oh. So you know what I mean? I can keep going for another, another 12 years. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> You've lost your time. There's no, listen, no do you know what it is? As much as, as Connor would know himself, when the body starts to give up, the heart and the mind take over. Mm-hmm. And I, do, I, just, I just love, love our girls. We have the yeah. best bunch of girls ever. Can I ask about the, the mothers and others situation there? Oh, that's they're amazing. Really ma- that's major all over the country. How's that going for you? Oh, they're, they're brilliant. We have, four, I think, 47 women on our breaks at the minute. And it's the best thing to come to the club because all of them, they're not women that's ever played uh, Gaelic before. And they just love it. They love the crack. They love the nights out. Yeah. They love going to the tournaments. They're a brilliant, brilliant bunch of women. And they're all ages. They're right from mid-30s to late-40s. They're, they're a great bunch, great bunch. Excellent. And are any ex-players playing? Are they all no, new groups? No, it's my, my, myself, Trina Call and Ursula Taggart. They started it. And then I just came in to give them a hand with my two daughters, Nicole and Amy, as well. But they're just, they, 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 you just don't mind getting up on Saturday mornings, you know, yeah. going them because they just, Love it. they're brilliant. They're brilliant. brilliant. Great asset to come. Excellent. Jared, you weren't a bad player in your time, I can remember. <laughs> going back a bit, like myself. Try their best. Try your that's, best. All, that's all <laughs> you can try say. Your best. Yeah. Well, what's the what's the buzz been like around the club with the 60th anniversary? I mean, it's that, been very good. A lot good. of work goes into it, obviously. Obviously, a lot of work goes into it, and and you can see as well also that through time the thing has changed. Whether we have ladies teams, we have underage girls teams. We are actually getting back to the stage now, and they're only starting to filter through. Is that we've got all these underage teams from under fives, under sevens, nines up. So the seniors are only just starting to filter through and our, and our senior Paul and I, like Pat says, for a few years there, probably from Connor's age, we didn't have any underage teams. So we were amalgamated with Tullish or Glen, different clubs to try and keep ourselves afloat. So it's only now that we've got our own under 17 team and that is starting to show mm-hmm. players coming through big influx of, of families. For a long time, all we had was girls in the primary school. Oh. Very, very few boys. Yeah. And uh, so it's started to become more um, 50-50. So we're having both boys and girls coming through the primary school. So it's it's a big help. I remember some of the teams. I was coach of the sorcery, so I'm from the town, but I coached a few teams. I remember John Havel. Yes. Connor's dad would have kept things going and even taking some of the school teams at that time yes. as well. So he would have done a lot of work at that yeah. time. Maybe the things are a bit tight. Yes. Oh, I would, obviously, I played with John myself. Yeah. So, uh, And then whenever John got injured, he more or less went to play reserve football and then he had five boys of his own and, and a girl. So uh, that give them uh, an impetus to, yeah. to sort of uh, yeah. continue with, with the underage teams. Okay. So, but it's, it's all good. It's, it's moving the right way. We have a lot of work has been done to the club. Uh, the pitch was redone, the yeah. new fence, and everything's looking well. well and actually, they started the couch to 5K, which actually brought a lot of people into the club that had never done any sport, even yeah. people that I went to school with, yeah. that have never done anything. Yeah in those years and they started doing a bit of run and they're actually running now and there's a couple of them has actually just completed a marathon there in Dublin. Good. So it, well, it's you're all part of it. Yes, yes, just, definitely just, is. Just, just to ask you just to ask you about the, the situation they just to send the pack before we come in here about getting a hundred for a dinner dance is pretty good. Yes. But you're getting three hundred and fifty. Did it have was it a hard sell for you or did people come along just ask for the tickets? I th- I think it I think it must have been a a very uh, a very good good work throughout the committee and a lot of good sponsorship and people taking tables you know um, actually tables and for themselves uh, like Pat says I haven't really been involved in the in the selling of the, the tickets but uh, just by keeping uh, on the whatsapp group you can see that we were we were going well and it's been a good sell and definitely 350s of us like I just about remember the old ones that were in the fairways in, in Dundalk. Pat maybe went to them, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was whenever you used to have buses and they would have took you down to the fairways in Dundalk. But them days is long gone. Long gone. Long so, gone. So it was pretty handy. Uh, it is indeed. Thank it you, is indeed. <coughs> Once again, just want to thank the Ashburn Hotel for their, uh, their, one of their lovely premises here. Um, not the first time we've been here this year, and it's not the last, so they're, they're very, very accommodating. Pat, looking back to your own playing, your own playing days, you're over the water, you got a couple of trials, I think, in some of the English clubs. Did, yeah. did, did they pass you by, do you think? 
Yeah, well, but I didn't take the opportunity myself or my brother. Um, we just, we just, came, <laughs> we just came home again. Um, we were only fourteen or fifteen, so we just came home. We did. Um, it was my dad arranged it. You know, he knew my dad. Yes, yeah, so that's very much so. And we football team. Yeah, but uh, um, he was poisonous. But yeah, we were just too young. We just didn't. Know. We just didn't. Different days. Different yeah, days. yeah. We're just, we're just homeboys. You know, so didn't last. Didn't only last. A few days, we were there for a few weeks, but the thing only after a few days, we two of us were back home again with my father, and, and that was basically it. How, how do you feel looking back at the girls when Lynn had said you were struggling at one time and now you were struggling yeah, anymore? Yeah. How difficult was to keep the team f- taking over when things were difficult? Well, it was very difficult to keep them going. There was a lot of people that helped out. At the end of the day, I was there um, trying to run the team. and. and we were going to meetings and things, we were trying to keep things going and uh, there was other people outside who gave a hand and again to help keep things going. Um, but um, it, it, it wasn't easy and they fulfilled their, all their matches. Um, the first year they joined the league, actually the first year we joined the league we got to the championship final and we finished one point behind the runners up in the league, we finished third in the league, the very first year. But um, it was it was new ground. and. Um, we were sort of just going our way around to see see what the crack was. Down leagues hadn't started that long. Um, the ladies leagues hadn't. They, they hadn't started that long. They started maybe about three years or so. Mm-hmm. But um, Kerry Duff, who's one of the top teams now, we actually they were actually starting off that year as well. We 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 beat them that year in Kerry Duff, and they beat us in Marlin. And then when we played them in the championship. We actually played them in the championship final and annihilated us. But um, now they're one of the top teams in town. You know. But uh, their girls have come on well. A lot of girls have passed through. Um, there's a new generation there. Um, well, like student then, of course, but there's a new generation there of players. <laughs> and uh, they, 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 as she says, you know, I've watched them a few times. A good team. Yeah. Good team. I watched them in the junior final there. Yeah. And, 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 and it absolutely was a terrible day. I just liked the whole, whole match. And they were, they were, they were played brilliant. Yeah. They were a young girl hurt in the, in the first couple of minutes and had to make a switch, but um, they were able to hold on and, and, and win the match. Excellent, Pat. Pat, looking back on, on you and I both remember Dan McCool taught us in St Paul's School. Hey, yes. Dan would have been one of your ex players way back a few years ago. But uh, looking back on your championship winning teams, who would you remember have been the best players and who do you remember playing with who stood out for that particular team? Well, we played the first time with your family in 1986. And um, Adrian McGoffey was the player manager and was suspended for the final. Did he play for down? He was playing for down. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. he was down, playing down. And then um, we can step back the next year in '87 and we won it with Bit Bally Hound. It's a junior championship, but there was only the two championships. There was only senior and junior. There was no intermediate. So we played a lot of teams well above us. Yeah. And, uh, and it was great. It was great for the boys. Um, Played along with good players. There was there was Jared there was a, a fantastic player. Um, Adrian McGoffey. Uh, don't want to leave anybody out. Big George Hanna. George, you know, yeah. m- m- my brother you know, Martin. Yeah. There were some great players. On uh, the goalkeeper, you know, big big Patrick Holland was the goalkeeper that year. Uh, his brother done goals then. Uh, the next time he won the championship uh, in eighty one, his brother um, Paul Holland he was the goalkeeper. So, but some fantastic players um, that I played, but when I got older, in my older age, and was in the 30s, the Con- like Connor and, and, and his brother Kevin, them boys were coming on onto the team. But it, there was there was two big guys, two of the Sweeney's, in fact there were three of the Sweeney's, they were fantastic players. Did they us? Sorry? Did they, no. No. Two of the Sweeney's? No. no they, 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 were, they were fantastic players, right. you know. Some Michaels, yes, I remember them. That's right. Yeah, they, 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 played, they played with some Michaels, yeah. <coughs> they, 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 one midfield, one centre half forward, and one played in the backs. And there were three brilliant players, like two, yeah. good boys to play with. Um, I think they cut them, they cut them, two of them was in the down palm, yeah. but um, they just, their patience maybe just didn't let them hang on there. Because yeah, it would have taken maybe a longer time to get in, because yeah. the, the down team at the time was, you know, they were poisoned, they were poisoned for. Uh, rebuild, yeah, and yeah. Um, but great players. Say there's there's players that I left out of play, but Martin Martin McCann was another player. Played he didn't win a championship with us. Martin had, had moved on down to life. Play he was playing for life then. On uh, Tony McCann, some fantastic players. You could, you could, Peter Downey who's just passed away this year was an Orbitan player too. But the player that, that I looked up to when I was young, um, wanted before I started playing senior football, was uh, Sean McGrath. He always he always petrified a, 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 a footballer. Yeah. You know, played one hundred percent to me. Always played 
no, no matter what, we were playing a team and we were hammering him, he, play, he wanted to win more. If you were playing a team you were getting hammered, he was still playing, it made no difference. And he sort of egged me on, he led. and that's what led me for yeah. the, you know, me to push, push the way I did. I never was a real steady player, but I played hard and I played and I became 100%. Brother and the referee in this year? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, well the, the referee, I had my fair arguments with the referees, you know what I mean? You know, um, but a referee myself, um, yeah. been refereeing 40 years now, just yeah. over 40 years. Yeah. And, uh, I really like it. If you don't like refereeing, there's no point in doing it. Um, I think there's there's a few boys around a referee and they don't enjoy it. Yeah. And to me then they don't do the proper job. If they're not enjoying it, you shouldn't be doing it. Right. But there's a lot of good referees. Of course there is. You know? And we need them. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones. You can't play without them. Exactly. Pat Connor, you're looking you're looking forward to the weekend. You're looking forward to next weekend with the, the dinner and the seagull. Big numbers are obviously so it's a lot of hard work in the dogs who what is your schedule for the night? Is there going to play of the year awards? Is there going to be Gears Player of the Year? So how does it actually work? Yeah, there's um, well, it kicks off pretty early there, so we're, we're meeting I think, at the the Seagull for six six o'clock. Um, myself and Jared, we managed the reserve team this year, so we've been picking the reserve player. Difficult task. Make sure the boys put their names down for the reserve player pair. So yeah, there's plans to make sure all the all the recognition goes to. You know, the, the players who deserve that vote, you know, uh, big thing really for the night will be to uh, recognise the ladies teams, mm-hmm. you know, because I was lucky enough and we won, we had a good um, dinner dance that year, good celebration, good recognition. It's a great honour going up and getting your medals off, you know, people have come in, special guests, so it'll be good for the, the President of Ireland there to be there to um, give the medals out for mm-hmm. the, the President of GAS, so. I'm lucky enough my daughter plays for the plays for the East Team as well, so yeah. she's getting two medals there. Excellent. Is there any really tickets available? Are the tickets all gone or can you say? Tickets are I think are all sold out. You know, they, there's a there's been a committee in the club involved in that who's you know, Patty McCone, uh, my brother Thomas, uh, and two has been heavily involved, Jared O'Neill's secretary has been playing a big part. You know, Trina's been heavily involved as well, Trina yeah. Cole, you know, so yeah. the, there's been a committee set aside girl who's been organising this for months. You know, and there's been a lot, a lot of work going into it. You know, and they're still in the club probably now at this stage. You so know, sorting out the origins and sorting out. Just going to ask Lynn, Jared, thank you very much. Just Lynn, then we'll finish off with Jared. Lynn, who's getting ladies player of the year then? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Can't say that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't get that. that. Don't, listen, if you could give the award to every single person on our team, yeah, because it did take the 20, 22, 23 girls this year. You know, you can, you can sit and you can point, you know, pinpoint who's got what. But it has taken, it has taken every single girl. Mm-hmm. You to come, like even, it's, oh, no, you couldn't. It's, it's hard to pick. The way, the way that me and Dave, my husband, my husband takes the team, the way we would do it between us is after every match, he gives me his player of the match, I do mine. Then at the end of the season, that's who our player of the year goes to. And that's, so we do player of the year, we do player's player, and then we do young player. We would do most improved, but we think we're too old to do most improved right. because if we did it would actually be Connor's daughter. <laughs> Connor's daughter Neve has oh my god, she's just a different girl this year.